Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be a pick a deck reading. The messages here are really open-ended. I'm not entirely sure what's going to come through, although I did receive the very general theme of light work, specifically your light work, your light work. So I'm curious to see what comes through on that front. And there also is a quick message here for anyone who clicked on this who doesn't really prefer the word light worker. Maybe you just don't enjoy that word or maybe you just never really think about it or never really use it for yourself um that's perfectly fine this video is still for you and you can always edit out the word light worker and put in your own preferred term it's just a convenient word for me to throw out there because people tend to know what i mean when i say it so i i just keep seeing someone like hands holding like holding their hands out like this and holding a ball of light that is floating about you know six inches or so above their palms, just like holding the light, holding the light, letting it float above their palms and it's glowing and growing and walking around, being able to use the light that you carry in your hands like a lantern. So with that, I will let you pick your deck, see which one is calling you in and I will see you in your reading. All right, deck number one. This is the wisdom of the oracle, oracle. <laughs> I remember doing a pick, a, a pick a deck reading with this deck before, but it really, really, really wanted to come through again, like really strongly. I remember thinking, oh, I don't know if I should use the same deck twice, but it was like, no, this deck has a message for somebody. It's really interesting to me because this deck, um, I almost have some like weird feelings about it. Like sometimes when I think about it, I feel like it's one of my more basic decks. I tend to think of it like that, but at the same time, it's one of my go-to decks. I reach for it all the time. The messages are always very clear, very spe specific, very poignant, very relevant. I absolutely love it, um, but it feels like it has less spectacle, less like it's less fancy than some of my other decks, but you know what? I don't use those fancy decks anywhere near as often. I reach for this one and I don't know why I feel like it is less fancy or more basic. I, I don't know where that feeling comes from. Um, so that's a, kind of an interesting lead in here. Maybe sometimes you feel like that, <laughs> right? Maybe you sometimes feel like that. And another kind of um, random message for you is with your energy, I'm really drawn into these two stones. I don't even know what they are. These are just stones that I just grabbed and Put out this one I mean this looks like obsidian I don't know what else this could be it's just a piece of black rock just a piece of obsidian as far as I'm aware I'm not that much of a crystal expert this one I don't remember it's all glittery would this be iron pyrite is that what this is But there's something about these two going together. I mean, they almost look like a yin yang side by side, right? We have the black and then the kind of glittery white, kind of silver, almost with flecks of gold in it though. Very interesting, very interesting. Something about these things side by side, like a tuxedo, like a penguin, a tuxedo cat. Somehow this represents something, something. This is symbolic of something for you, right? These two energies being side by side. These two energies, the the plain black with the glittery silver, the glittery silver with hints of gold in it, side by side, working in harmony, working in harmony. Maybe you're working on harmonizing two aspects of yourself. Maybe you're working on finding harmony be between your inner reality and your outer reality, between you and someone else. Between your human self and your higher self, between your shadow side and your light side, all, all of the different iterations you can run with that, right? The theme of duality. <laughs> Gonna be using some tarot cards I think as well, but let me get a few of these cards out. A leg up, blessed, number 22. and deep knowing. Okay, <laughs> get those out of the glare for you. Mm. 
there's many different levels to this. I could go many, like, what am I trying to say? Okay, so everything I'm about to say is likely playing out for you on many different levels simultaneously because you are at the point in the evolution of your consciousness where things don't just happen on one level, right? Everything is mirroring something else. Everything is happening in a multidimensional fashion for you. And that is true for everyone all of the time, but we're not always aware of it, right? When we're in a kind of lower vibration of consciousness, we tend to think that things are happening in isolation that, uh, and that things are, everything feels disconnected and we can't really make sense of things, but you are operating at a faster frequency than you used to and your consciousness is also expanded to include more of your own consciousness so when one thing is happening in one area of your life it ripples out and it's all synchronistic so this is like you know on the human levels on some level developments in your career and and in your love life and in your personal life and your spiritual life like all of the different life areas that you might have that are relevant for you they all tend to kind of advance hand in hand um and so this can be a little bit overwhelming because it's like everything can happen and can change all at once um so there's this little bit of a feeling of having to rise to the occasion but you're going to be getting help with that okay you're going to be getting help with that and this leg up to me when i when i first saw this this is about you actually receiving like some kind of energetic assistance from I could call them your guides, right? They could be your guides, your ancestors, your angels, um, your star family, like who, whoever, whoever it is for you, right? But essentially there are interdimensional beings, right? Interdimensional beings, higher dimensional beings that are reaching out to help you at this time and to give you this leg up. This is like energetic support, okay? On a spiritual level, energetic support on a spiritual level. Um, I actually see kind of like an offloading, <laughs> an offloading of some of the energy that you've had to process, okay? An offloading of some of the energy that you've had to process, like actually handing it over to your guides, your, your star family, like your your team, right? Use whatever words work for you. This is handing it over to the to the divine, handing it over to beings who are not currently living in physical bodies right on earth this is like handing it over to other realms handing the energy over because i feel like actually as i'm saying this my back is starting to hurt <laughs> so you guys have been carrying too much of a load okay this is like ten of wands energy here i mean not this card specifically but it's like what came before this card was ten of wands you've been carrying too much of a load and it's time for someone to assist you with that it's time to energetically offload some of this energy that you've been carrying um so you, this can go many different ways for some of you this is like an like working through ancestral burdens right doing ancestral clearing for some of you um so this is specific what, what i'm about to say like just a quick thing here is very specific to people who already know about this so if you haven't thought about this before i'm not talking to you i'm talking to the people who very specifically already know about this if you already know that you have been working in this life to break um i'm going to just straight up call them ancestral curses right if you <laughs> if you already know that your family has inherited a curse like through your biological bloodline um and you are here in this lifetime to break that curse to break this inherited generational curse it, this is like this is the this is the time where that is finally you're finally freeing yourself from that and you're freeing your entire genetic line from that right so so some of, some of you it's very serious like that others of you it's like you know having too many family responsibilities too many work responsibilities um even too many friend responsibilities of always having you, you, your friends um you know coming to you in their time of need and maybe you're just feeling overwhelmed by carrying the burden for others it's like you're overwhelmed by having carrying the by having carried the light for others so often right um, and this this is a really common thing for light workers to experience, especially when it's kind of in the earlier stages of your journey. Like, and I don't mean like super early. I mean within the first several years of your journey when you're kind of um, going through the first several years of getting into your spiritual your spiritual journey, getting into um, you know maybe for some of you identifying as a light worker and 
or working on your spiritual mission, how, however you, you look at that, right? You end up taking on a lot of energetic burdens and you're always working on being there for others, right? On holding space for others, on being compassionate for others, on being a good listener, on being the support system. And eventually you can get burnt out on that, right? You, you, get, you get burnt out. Um, and that's okay. This is actually like in and of itself an, an initiation for you because as you um, learn how to curate your energy, like curate the amount of energy that you take on, curate the burdens that you take on and basically balance your light work, <laughs> you're learning to balance your light work. You will become better and better and better at offloading what you cannot handle um, because I think... I mean, this happened to me too when I first came across the word light worker and that resonated for me and I was like, wow, okay. And then I got, um, I found myself taking on more and more of an energetic burden um, for others. And, you know, it was like, oh my, I almost like couldn't help myself, right? I, I almost couldn't help myself because I felt like that, that it was just so natural for me to flow in that direction. But eventually as like the months and years go by, you get, you get burnt out on that and you feel like, um, you know, the, this, the very specific feeling is, I am always there for others. I am always carrying the burden for others. I'm always doing for others. And when is someone going to do something for me? When, 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 like, if I'm always the shoulder for others to cry on, whose shoulder do I get to cry on, right? Who's going to be there for me, right? And maybe some of you don't have anyone in your physical life to be your shoulder to cry on or to carry the load for you or to just make you a cup of coffee, right? Maybe, maybe some of you have, don't, don't, maybe some of you really don't have much physical support, like support in the physical. Maybe some, of, maybe some of you do have some support in the physical, but you feel like you're still carrying a heavier burden, right? So the support comes in, it's coming in first on a spiritual level. And here's the thing though, is you actually have to consent <laughs> to giving, to passing away this burden. You actually have to say, I can't carry all of this. I'm willing to hand it over. I'm willing to let it go. And I'm willing to ask for assistance. I'm willing to ask for support. Um, so that in and of itself is a kind of an interesting, an interesting initiation to go through, right? Because it's like you um, learning your own you're learning how, like what you can actually handle. You're learning what you can actually do. You're, you're learning to manage your own energy. Um, and that is ultimately gonna, you might go through like a shrinking phase, right? A shrinking phase where you have to pull your energy back from others. You maybe have to spend more time alone. You maybe have to start telling people no. Um, maybe even for some situations, you might even uh, feel like you have no choice but to give people kind of tough love, right? The tough love thing, thing where you just say, I simply cannot help you anymore. I simply, I cannot lend you any more money. I simply cannot listen, like have this conversation one more time. I simply cannot carry that for you one more time, right? I just, I just, I don't have anything left in me, right? If you have to tell people, if you have to tell people that it might feel like tough love, but you can really just do that. If you have to have that conversation, if, if you're like in that kind of position, um, I like my personal my my personal advice on that uh, just from my own experience I would say just be brutally honest with someone just be like from your own authenticity and just say look I just I literally don't have anything left to give like I I I wish I could help you <laughs> I, I like it, it's not it's not you it really is me I just simply don't have anything left if I if I am to continue helping you in this way and I mean it doesn't even have to be anything big it could literally just be I I literally can't even like like I can't hang out right now. I can't have a cup of coffee. I, I can't have a cup of coffee right now. Like with you, I just I can't. Like I can't. I just I don't have anything. Like I'm I'm dry. Right. The tank is dry. I got nothing left. I'm running on empty. Empty. I just have to take take care of myself. Like right now. Right. Um. That's how I personally approach those kind of situations. Just being like brutally honest with people and saying like I I just I don't have the energy and like that's all I can say about it. Right. Um. And you, I think when, from my, my, my experience with that has always been very good because I find that people um, really respect that and they end up understanding where I'm coming from and it seems like it always kind of works out. It, that always ends up working out for me anyway. So, so you're all in kind of a different level on this, right? Um, but so coming back to this leg up, right? This is someone coming in to support you. And of course this, this support could be coming through on the physical as well, but I feel like, like all things, right? The support comes in energetically first. So you, <laughs> if you want to receive, like, if you want to materialize this support, cause think about it, you can actually support, support, like people supporting you. Um, and that can be in terms of like physical bodies showing up to help you with your housework or whatever it is, or money coming in. Um, 
or a vacation, right? Whatever kind of support that you need, that is something that you can materialize or manifest just like anything else. Um, and so in order to manifest it, first you have to imagine it and then you have to say, yes, 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 I consent to this, I, I, I want this. And then you actually have to consent to giving up the burden, right? You actually have to consent to giving up the burden. And I think that's what might trip you guys up a little bit. You're so used to carrying the burden, you don't even know how to put it down. It's like, um, have you ever had to carry something really heavy for a really long distance, like a really heavy backpack, maybe back in high school when you had to carry all your textbooks, right? Um, like it's like you can the backpack can weigh on your shoulders it's pulling on your shoulders and it's cramping down your spine and you're hunching over and you've been carrying it for so long but then you kind of get numb to it and then when you put it down putting down the backpack sometimes that's when it starts hurting more because then your spine starts straightening out and you realize how much the backpack straps are digging into your shoulders and it's like it hurts to put it down right it can hurt to put the burden down um so there's really like a surrendering process here uh, so really um the energetic support on a spiritual level can't come in unless you give up something, right? You have to, you have to give it up. You have to give it up. <laughs> you have to surrender it. And that is your, like any, any kind of feeling of giving up. Like some of you, it could feel like you have to give up. Some, some of you, you know, maybe you have to quit a job or work less hours, or maybe you're, maybe it's something as simple as going like, I simply cannot keep my house as clean as I want it to be. Maybe I, I'm just going to have to be okay with the fact that my house is is messy for a few days a week and I just have to be okay with that, right? Like giving up those standards of how clean your house is supposed to be. <laughs> so like like whatever it is, right? Give it up, give it up, surrender it, surrender it. And that's making room for the blessing, right? It's making room for the blessing. You will feel blessed, okay? It is your turn to feel blessed, right? Um just need to make the space for it. Just need to make the space for it energetically and then it comes through physically. Um, a really concrete example here is <laughs> I'll use a personal example, right? Um, I'm typically in my family, in my household, I'm in charge, like I, I'm in charge of the grocery shopping, not not because anybody put me in charge of the grocery shopping, just because I'm the one who thinks about that the most and I like to keep on top of everything and I like to make sure that we never run out of anything. So I'm typically always going, oh, you know, we're two days from running out of that and then I run to the store and pick it up and I'm just constantly replenishing the kitchen, right? So that I, we never run out of anything, right? We have always got what we need. Um, but sometimes when I've gotten really busy or just really tired or just whatever, um, I just, I stop going to get groceries, right? And I just let the kitchen empty out. Be, and I remember sometimes when that happens, I start to feel guilty. I go, oh my God, I'm not living up to these expectations that I've put on myself, right? And I go, what are we gonna do? Like we ran out of milk, oh my God, it's all my fault. But you know what happens when I let that happen? <laughs> I, I remember the first time I let that happen. Um, my husband and my stepson were, were out doing whatever they were doing and they called me up and they said, we're at the grocery store getting groceries. What do you want? And I just had this moment of like, oh my God, like it, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, you guys are getting groceries? Like like the, my men, my, my boys are grocery shopping and they're calling and asking me like, what do I want? And I was like, and, and I was like, the only thing I had to do was to, to, the only thing I had to do to make that happen was to stop going grocery shopping. It's like, if I stopped being so on top of it, guess what? they just started handling it because they realized, oh wait, we, we could use some groceries. Let's go get groceries. It was like nothing. I didn't have to like talk to my husband about why can't he have get groceries? I didn't need to get all upset about it. It was like, no, like literally as soon as he noticed that we ran out of stuff, he went and got groceries, didn't even think anything of it. And <laughs> so that that's like a really simple example, right? It, it, if you just let it go, someone else will handle it for you, okay? Someone else will handle it for you. And, you know, this is, again, multiple levels. This could apply to something very specific in your human life, like grocery shopping, or this is also like on a much more spiritual level. This is like energy that you don't need to be processing, okay? You're, you're like you guys do like in terms of your light work you do a lot of emotional processing for others like energetic processing for others a lot of you is for your ancestors right for your for your family um a lot of you for those of you who don't like particularly resonate as having like a strong energetic connection to your family right this is like processing emotions and energy for the collective but you know what and you might feel like oh you know i'm i'm here to you know 
help consciousness evolve, right? And, and I know that I have this role as a light worker or what, however that resonates for you, right? And so you might feel like I, I, I need to do more work. I need to do more work. I need to process more energy. I want to ground this energy. I want to evolve my consciousness and constantly and constantly and constantly. But you know what? It ends up being a little bit like trying to drink the ocean, right? Trying to drink the ocean. Like you can't drink the entire ocean. Like you can't process all of the energy that earth is going to eventually process, right? It's like impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. You're trying to drink the ocean. You're trying to drink the ocean. It will, you will never be able to drink the ocean. So it's okay if you take a day off from trying to drink the ocean or if you, or if you dial it back a bit and you know, you, you stop trying to drink the ocean. Like it's, it's okay. It's okay to stop processing so much energy. You can take that step back. And that just means that that energy is just going to flow somewhere else. There's no reason for you to be taking it on. Okay, there's no reason for you to be taking it on. You take you take on way too much energy and there's no reason to do that. Like if you stop, so something I hear, a, like I've heard a lot of people say is they go, oh, if I stop doing this work, what's going to happen? If I stop processing this energy, what's going to happen? It's like, um, so that that's essentially trauma from past lives where in some kind of past life, many different ways this could go, right? Uh, you were essentially, you had some kind of role, either either a role like physically in society or an energetic role where you were essentially keeping things going by doing your work. You were literally keeping things going by doing your energetic processing or by doing your light work. You were literally keeping things going and eventually you couldn't do it anymore and then some kind of tragedy happened, right? Um, so it's important to just stop, like however that resonates for you, right? To just stop and go, that was then, this is now. That was then, <laughs> this is now that was then <laughs> and this is now that's not going to happen this time right this is like the moment you're in right now is an entirely different situation it might seem similar it might seem like if you stop doing this work whatever it is that something bad will happen but i promise that is not the case okay <laughs> i promise that is not the case it's not going to happen again it's not the same situation it's not it's not because i mean just to put it out there in the broadest way possible right the, the the energy on earth right now and the the trajectory that your life is going i mean your life can be going in a whole spectrum of timelines and trajectories but you know the general flow of your life and the state of energy on the planet right now is a completely different situation so it's okay for you to to stop doing this work it doesn't need to be done by you. It doesn't need to be done by you right now. It doesn't need to be done by you forever. You can stop it. You can put it down. And that's actually just going to open you up to a whole new, new level of your journey. This isn't even the, like you might, <laughs> now I'm like, but I can like feel someone going, but I don't want to quit, right? I don't want to quit being a light worker or I don't want to quit being of spiritual service or I don't want to quit, uh, like serving humanity, right? Like there's, there's, however that, you know, there's many different ways you could express that kind of base feeling that is behind those statements right um so feel into that as you will but there's this feeling of i don't want to i don't want to be a quitter i don't want to quit well it's not about quitting okay this is actually about leveling up <laughs> this is actually about leveling up your your light work this is you're leveling up your light work so deck number one here right wisdom of the oracle you are leveling up your light work but first you have to stop doing this kind of lower level of work <laughs> this lower level of work so that you can do a deeper, a deeper level of light work that will actually be more fulfilling for you. It will be more calibrated to your specific soul and your skills, and it will feel less like work. In fact, you're going to need to come up with a new word. If you previously used the word light work or energy work, you're going to need a new word that doesn't include the word work <laughs> because it's not going to feel like work anymore when you get to this deeper level or this higher level, right? This next phase of your journey, because it's, it's going to feel different, right? It's going to come from this deep, deep knowing, okay? This deep level of knowing and it, it's like if something feels like work that actually means that it's not entirely a match for your energy right if something feels like work it's not a perfect match for your energy so i think it's worth it to just take a minute for me to make a statement that many of you probably heard me say before but i wanted to state it again because for somebody maybe you're hearing me this say this for the first time you know, if you resonate as having like 
a light worker mission or a star seed mission or like a soul purpose, any of that kind of thing, it is true you do have that, but your real mission or purpose is to simply be here and exist, is to, is to be yourself, is to allow your soul to shine as bright as, as it can. And it's an allowing of that, right? An allowing of yourself to shine, allowing yourself to grow, allowing yourself to thrive. That is your only real like purpose or mission, right? Um, but so, in ter but of course, a lot of people, and if you're watching this, probably a lot of you have this, this nagging feeling of like, I want, I want to have some kind of purpose. Like, I feel like I, I, I feel like I want to have a purpose. Like having a purpose makes me feel like a direction, a purpose, a mission, like that, that's a satisfying thing for me, right? That's a satisfying thing. So you, we look around in our lives for like, how can I, how can I, like, what is my purpose? What is my, my mission? And so I, I see that more is like, that is an expression of your purpose or an expression of your mission, right? Your real purpose, your real mission is to simply exist and to be and to thrive. And then you can express that purpose or that mission in different ways um, by doing whatever it is that comes naturally to you to be of spiritual service or to help the collective or just to spread the light, like wh wh however you see it, right? There's something, there is something you can do, some kind of job, some kind of thing that occupies your time, something that you put out into the world that is, that does serve the expansion of consciousness, right? Um, but that, that is like an expression of your mission. That's like a secondary thing. And so this expression of your mission or this expression of your purpose, when, when you are fully synchronized with it, it will no longer feel like work. It will actually feel like a release. It will feel like a release. It's not something you have to work on or work through. It's like, I just have all of this light, all of this energy, all of this passion, all of this drive, all of this love inside of me. And I just release it out of me. And I just, <laughs> I just kicked a, a thing of clear quartz, clear across the room. <laughs> um, like, so the, like that, that is exact, that is perfectly it, right? I didn't have to like work to make, to like push that crystal across the room. I just like was talking and I, I'm a passionate hand talker and I flung that crystal across the room and it was released from the table, right? That is a perfect example. So that's how you know when you're like fully aligned with your soul's purpose, your soul's mission, however you look at it. it it's when it is feel like it's just flowing out of you and when it is easier to express it than it is to contain it right? Containing it would feel like work, but expressing it, ah, oh, that is so easy, so satisfying. And you do it just for the, the pure pleasure of expressing it, right? And it comes from that deep, deep knowing in your soul, right? Coming from the deep knowing in your soul. So you're leveling up your light work into this. I'm not even going to come up with a word. You know, if you want to come up with a word for your next level of light work, that is up to you because it's going to be you individual to all of you. Um, how you just express your light, right? It's just about expressing your light, expressing your light. <sighs> Putting down the burdens. Feeling, feeling that feeling of blessed, right? You get to that place of feeling ble blessed by putting down the burdens. And then it's like there's going to be this, it's like you have literally these three cards. I'm not even going to draw any tarot cards. I know I said I was, but this is, this is complete just as is you have kind of three phases in front of you. First is this putting down the burden so you can receive some type of assistance, spiritual assistance, energetic assistance first. And then if you choose to materialize that in the physical with physical assistance, then that can come as well. Then this moment of feeling blessed, right? This, this blessed card, this could actually end up feeling kind of like a hanged man energy where you kind of sit around and there could be like a pause, right? There could be a pause. This pause, it could go for months actually. So moving forward, if you feel like nothing's really happening for you, if you feel like on a bit of a plateau or a bit of a pause, a bit of a break for a few months, I wouldn't be surprised. It's not necessarily all of you. It depends how things are flowing for you, right? Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if you go through a kind of pause. Just know that, just really enjoy that, okay? Really, really enjoy the pause. Suck every last drop out of it, even if you're not doing anything but sitting around staring out the window, right? Suck every last drop and just feel how blessed that is because any amount of space that you do experience is a gift, okay? And you're going to be doing a lot of... Um, like integrating, just integrating, 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 understanding, coming to your deep knowing, right? Coming to your deep knowing that comes deep from within. And it's kind of this massive, 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 massive period of deep integration before you flow into the next phase of your 
expression of your light, right? Expression of your light. And then when you start moving forward again, you will have a completely different approach about taking on other people's energy, picking up burdens that are, are not yours. And because you will, no, you will no longer take on energy that you cannot handle. You will no longer take on burdens that don't need to be taken on by you. And you'll be moving more into this phase of just expressing your, your light, right? Expressing your light in a way that is so natural and so easy for you. And that takes you to, a, it's like a whole new level of the spiral after that, a whole new level of the spiral. So I'm going to leave you guys there, sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, deck number two, you guys picked the Beyond Lemuria Oracle cards. I know this deck is super popular. I love it and I am really curious to see what this is about. I can tell you just by, just because I know this deck and just vibing with it here for a minute, this is going to be about like a massive expansion of your consciousness, okay? Um, I don't, like I'm, I'm sure at least a few of you watched the first deck as well and that one was pretty like grounded and about managing your energy um so i mean this could go really hand in hand with that if you did watch that one um this one did but this reading is going to i can tell you even before i draw the cards just because this whole deck is, is is like this right um it's about expansion of your consciousness like having a man i'm getting a third eye headache just tuning in just tuning into this energy i have not had a third eye headache until just now <laughs> tuning into your guys's vortex so yeah, specifically, this is going to be related to third eye and crown, like the amount of energy that, that you guys are receiving from higher realms is going to be increasing. Um, but it's not just about receiving energy. It's also about transmitting energy because your crown, when it's functioning in its most optimal capacity, your crown is a receiver and transmitter simultaneously. So something for you guys to know, especially those of you who resonate as star seeds, is that you are transmitting just as much as you are receiving right your crown is a two-way street <laughs> um and i mean and this is this is for everybody watching this right everybody everybody watch it for watching this as well but there is something here about for star seeds like you are communicating and like teaching and guiding even your star family right um because you're the boots on the ground human in the human body, right? And you are learning about Earth, learning about what it is to be a human and how shit works down here on Earth. And you have sometimes gone through a lot of different trials and tribulations trying to figure out simply like how to exist here, <laughs> right? How to, how to exist here. This isn't even about like figuring out how to do your taxes and get a job and navigate human relationships, right? This is like how even to be in your body as a human, right? And everything that you've learned, you are transmitting out to your collective, out to your star family. And so same thing for if, you, if you're listening to this and you don't resonate as a star seed, it's still the same thing for you, right? You're, you're, you're still transmitting, um, your experience up to the cosmos to whoever you are connected with and that ha that serves a purpose right your learnings serve a purpose and you know we we talk i think it's pretty common right a lot of us feel like we're always receiving information from the higher realms receiving guidance right receiving teachings um and that is of course all true and very important but at the same time we are also transmitting energy up to the higher realms and they are learning from us and we are teaching them things and we are giving them the experience of the sensory world right the experience of the sensory world the higher being the higher in the higher dimensions right where everyone exists as non-physical consciousness we teach them what it is like to have a body we teach them what it is like to be able to see hear smell feel like sense right they don't have that um, and we, we are teaching them about that so that they can actually uh, like simulate simulate having a physical body uh, up in the non-physical dimension so that they can like dream the experience we're down here like having it in some kind of physical fashion right um, 
it gets to be a little muddy trying to figure out like is the physical world real at all like like on what level is is physical is the physicality real that's a little bit of a rabbit hole that you could go down i'm going to just put a pin on that and i don't think i'm going to get into that right now <laughs> so just, let's just say we have a very visceral experience of the physical world right and we're transmitting that experience up and into the non-physical world and that is a very valuable thing that we teach to our higher non-physical brothers and sisters right <laughs> um very interesting opening message so let me get some cards here so in terms of light work let me just try to conclude that thought in terms of light work this is almost like flipping the script a little bit <laughs> you're flipping the script you realize that um to a certain extent it's almost like you've played the student long enough right you've done your learning long enough and it's time for you to be a teacher it's time for you to transmit what you know um, and it's time for you to step into a level of mastery and also for you to really 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 internalize the fact that any higher dimensional beings that you are in communication with and i mean literally any like the think of the highest the highest right interdimensional being spiritual being consciousness that you can think of you are an equal you are an equal you are a perfect peer to that being to that level of consciousness right you are not lower or lesser than in any fashion whatsoever um the the, the idea that the human realm, the earth realm, the physical realm is lower or less than, that is a product of human thinking, right? That is a human idea um, and you are transcending that and you are realizing that you are an equal to the universe itself, right? You are an equal to the universe itself. So, unique gifts, 55. I'm putting 50, that's number 55 because the 5-5 five, five has changed, changed. This is like change change right? and whenever i see uh sequences of fives i just hear the word change 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 every time i see the word five the word five the number five crown chakra the unlimited self so guys how long did i ramble on about the crown chakra before i pulled this card crown chakra the unlimited self the unlimited self you are an equal to the universe because you are unlimited. You are the universe, really, right? <laughs> every single being who exists inside of this universe, every single iota of consciousness that exists within this universe is the universe. It's simply a matter of shifting your perspective. And by shifting your perspective, I mean that's the same thing as like, are you looking to the left or are you looking to the right? Like with your eyeballs. If you shift your perspective of your consciousness, the same way you can shift the perspective of your eyeballs. Are, are, are you going to be, or do you want to look out of the smallest piece of your consciousness where you're, where you're this tiny little fractal of consciousness looking out at a enormous universe? Or are you going to look out from your other eyeball and be the universe looking in on itself? that's that's that that's literally what this is like right uh, <laughs> right as a human you have a left eyeball and a right eyeball most of us <laughs> as the universe itself you have trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of eyeballs like trillions doesn't even begin to cut it right a number so big i don't have a number for it every single fractal of consciousness right that think of all of the tiniest 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 fractals of consciousness if you can imagine consciousness breaking down into its smallest possible fractal fragment piece sliver whatever you want to call it each one of those is an eyeball right so you take one of those and imagine that that is your left eyeball right and from that little tiny fr fractal of consciousness is looking out of the universe and it's seeing whatever it can see. It's seeing all the other fractals of consciousness and it's seeing how enorm impossibly enormous the universe is, right? But the right eyeball <laughs> is the unified universe, the unified universe. Like, and it is one entity in and of itself. It is unified, it is cohesive, it is one eyeball. And 
what is it what does it look out on maybe it looks out onto other universes but depending on what depending on how you're using the word universe are we talking about just our just our physical universe are we talking about our whole multiverse are we talking about all that is <laughs> we're talking about all that is right the one unity consciousness on the most extreme level right how, how wherever you want to draw the line on that one that's the other eyeball and it's basically looking inwards right it's either looking out at other universes or it's looking inwards on itself because it has nothing else to look at if we're talking about all that is there's nothing else to look at so that eyeball looks inwards so there it's it, it's the same right it's the same it's the same <sighs> home okay unique gifts I'm really interested in the symmetry of this being the symmetry of this being they even seem to have eyeballs up on the top of their head here Crown chakra, the unlimited self. Home. Look at this beautiful being. Heart chakra, emphasized twice here as well. I want to get some tarot cards to go with these. Okay. So now there's this feeling of like, how do you process this? What do you, what do you do with this? How do you make sense of this? How do you walk around in your body with this expanded state of consciousness? That third eye headache is coming back, right? Pounding in your forehead. I just feel like somebody asking, like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, how do I deal with this? How, how do I make sense of this? Am I crazy? Who am I going to talk to? Everyone's going to think I'm crazy. I'm just... <laughs> it's that feeling of alienation that can come when you reach a higher level of awakening. Um, maybe some of you, even your third eye is coming, uh, like, getting more visual. And maybe sometimes you're seeing visions, seeing things that maybe you can't control, seeing things that you don't want to see, seeing things that confuse you, seeing things that don't make any sense, seeing things that seem to contradict other things. And what do you what do you do with all of this, right? What do you do? That was the eight of swords that like tried to fall out and then I kind of folded it back in before I thought about it. Seven of cups, moon child. Wow, this is a lot of water energy. nine of cups so what do you do <laughs> what do you do what do you do about all this find that place of maturity right this is finding that place of spiritual maturity like emotional maturity but from a kind of spiritual perspective and a horn just started honking so when you feel like a ping pong ball <laughs> bouncing around everywhere right or when you feel like your mind is bouncing around like a ping pong ball because we got this seven of cups here right which is like so many options what how do i how do i come what kind of conclusion do i come to how, how am i supposed to what am i supposed to do right there's this sense of uncertainty this sense of confusion right that the, the seven of cups reflects perfectly that sense of confusion i was trying to trying to describe going like which is it? Is it this or is it that? How, how do I add this all up? How do I come to the conclusion? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Trying to sort this out on the ping pong table will not work. 
okay? If you're just hitting the ping, it's like, it's like the two halves of your brain are like hitting the ping pong ball back and forth, right? Left brain and right brain, they're pinging it back and forth, going like, I can't figure it out. I'm not, I'm not sure. Is it this or is it that? Which way does it go? What do I do? You cannot resolve this conundrum. You cannot find the solution to the enigma. You cannot solve the mystery, right? On that plane of consciousness, on that plane of existence, on that level of thought. So if you ever find yourself like stewing on a problem going, hmm, I don't know how to solve this. 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 I don't know what to do. Stop, 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 <laughs> stop, stop. You cannot solve it on that level, right? You, you cannot, you cannot. You'll just keep looping and looping and looping and looping and looping. The only way forward is up. The only way out is to transcend. The, the answer is the wisdom can only be found on a higher plane of consciousness. So some of you, if you have not um, read about the hermetic principles before, for some of you, there is like a huge rabbit hole for you to go down, a big initiation. Just look look up the, the Kybalion, the Kybalion with a K, K-Y, Kybalion. Um, or the Hermetic Principles, you can just Google that, it'll come up. That, yeah, let me just point you in that direction. If, if that is resonating, then you know that's for you, right? Um, that is one method that you can use to rise up above the ping pong table, right? You have to get to a higher plane of analysis, right? Coming to a higher plane of analysis, a higher level of thought, a higher level of emotional maturity with the nine of cups, right? A higher level of emotional and spiritual maturity, rising above it all, right? Realizing that like a very, very simple human level example here is like, imagine you're arguing with someone and you just, it's like, it, you're starting to feel like this argument can never be solved, right? The argument can never be solved. And when you come to that understanding of, oh my God, this argument cannot be solved, what do we do? <laughs> to rise above it, right? You have to find the higher level. You have to leave the argument behind and come to a, a whole nother experience, a whole nother plane of existence. So that is what you're doing here. That is what you're doing. <sighs> this moon child, right? This moon child card. The um, those of you who are seeking a solution, right? Those of you who are seeking answers, they're not going to come in the way that your human mind might expect, right? You might want someone to give you. I mean, there's different ways this can play out. If you are looking for a step by step process, if you're going, somebody just give me something, just tell me what to do, give me the steps, give me the process, you're going to keep hitting your head against the wall. People, some people might be willing to give you steps and a process, but if you keep trying that, it's not going to work. Like you're going to keep being disappointed. <laughs> you're going to keep realizing, but it didn't work. That didn't work for me. That didn't work for me. It didn't work for me, right? It's because if, if that is the case for you, then this is to actually get you to stop thinking in that linear way, to stop seeking us stop seeking a process stop seeking step by steps and it's to get you to to just follow the flow follow your intuition follow your internal compass and just walk into the unknown without knowing what to do right it's not about what you do it's just about flowing in a direction um and so same thing for any other like any other type of um if you're if you're like looking for specific answers right like another thing um like what's what's this what's this, like a simple example Mm, so somebody like somebody maybe somebody's trying to figure out like who are their guides like what like what what are the names of my guides how many guides do I have and what are their names and like wh where where did my soul originate where is my soul born if you're looking for very specific answers like that um you might never find those answers and I mean you might be able to go to different types of readers and psychics who can give you answers but then you might ultimately like you might find a moment of satisfaction but then you might find that oh well, that maybe that didn't really resonate or oh well then this other reader this other psychic gave me a different answer and now I'm confused <laughs> right so if you're looking for very specific answers like that you're gonna keep ending up disappointed with them and it's because the your the approach here is not 
the, the approach that you're using is outdated. There is nothing actually wrong with your approach, right? There's nothing actually wrong with wanting a sequence of next steps. There's nothing actually wrong with wanting to know how many guides you have and what their names are and where your soul originated from. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's that that is an outdated approach, right? That approach kind of belongs back in the 20th century, to, to be honest. It's in that kind of older energy. That's when that type of, those approaches, that's when those made sense. I mean, even five years ago, right? Like, but those approaches don't, they're going to, how to describe, they're going to keep breaking down. They're going to become less and less and less effective as we, as we continue to move into the 2020s, you know, and beyond. Those old approaches are just not going to work. So you'll keep feeling like you're spinning your wheels until you transcend those type of approaches. I mean, and what your, whatever your approach is, it's going to be different for all of you, right? But it's just like that that thing that you're doing that's just keeping you spinning your wheels and just never seems to work. And you're like, why isn't it working? You need to get to a, a new level of experience, a new level of consciousness, a new level of approaching what you're seeking, right? Seek in a new way. Seek in a new way and receive in a new way. And understand that... Um, Things are going to get less specific. <laughs> things are going to become less specific and things are going to become less black and white. They're going to become less linear because everything is getting quantum, right? Things are becoming quantum. They're becoming non-linear. They're becoming chaotic. They're becoming multidimensional where you can't receive one specific answer because one specific answer from the perspective of the universe, from the perspective of, of like the higher dimensions, from your higher self, a specific answer about how many guides you have or what is your step-by-step -step process, that doesn't make sense on a higher level, right? That makes sense on a lower level of human consciousness, but those things just don't make sense on the higher level because that's not how things are up there, right? So it's like your human mind is kind of going through this painful kind of rejiggering of how you how you receive inspiration from the universe and it's going to have to get used to feeling like getting used to receiving openly receiving in a non-attached way and also like when you can still ask for guidance from the universe and you can still ask to receive answers but just know that they're going to come in a different way they're going to come subtle or they're going to come open-ended right and, and it's gonna come this and that and that and that you're not gonna get you're not gonna ever really receive one specific answer because there is no one specific answer it's like interpreting poetry right even if you only ever read poetry in high school and you don't care about interpreting poetry right I'm sure you remember your high school English teacher saying like there's not one right way to interpret poetry right it might be true that some interpretations of a poem are better than others that might be true relatively speaking anyway you could make an argument that some interpretations of a poem are better than others some of them are definitely more supported by the text than others but there's never just one interpretation of a poem so receiving guidance and inspiration uh, and answers from the universe is like that they're, they're, it's going to come open to your interpretation and however you interpret it is going to be like interpreting poetry, right? And, and that that that's how it that's how it is moving forward. That's how it is moving forward. And like your home is where the heart is. Right? Your home is where the heart is following your heart-centered consciousness. Your heart-centered consciousness. And this is actually going to allow you to open up to your own unique gifts. Like maybe sometimes you ask, what is my what are my soul gifts? right? What are my psychic abilities? What is my purpose? What is my mission? Again, you might not receive specific answers on that because maybe you don't fit into any of the answers. Maybe you are something beyond any of the previous archetypes. If you've been trying to fit yourself into any preconceived definition, any preconceived label, any preconceived way of being, it's that's never really going to work because you are entirely unique and your gifts, your soul gifts are entirely unique. So no one can really tell you what they are. Oh, you can only feel what they are. Maybe you can't even articulate to yourself what they are, right? But you can start to feel what they are. So this is like, remember when we saw eight of the, the eight of swords like flipped out and then I just kind of shuffled it back in. The eight of swords is freeing yourself from limiting beliefs, freeing yourself from the cage of your mind, freeing yourself from the cage of social conditioning, freeing yourself from all of those like limitations and cages, right? 
So this is like, you guys are like a, a one of the kind mold, a one of the kind mold. So you, you can't fit into any other thing. And even when you meet people who feel like soul family to you and you're like, oh, I resonate with you, with you so much, you're still gonna be entirely unique from them, right? Um, this is almost like reconcile, like come to terms with how unique you are. Come to terms with how uniquely powerful you are. Um, and come to terms with the fact that you, at this point, you're at the point now where you have to be your own leader because there is no one who is qualified to lead you. You are your own leader. There is no one who can lead you because who could possibly lead you better than you? You are your own leader. And so with this comes feelings of, oh my God, I don't, <laughs> I don't feel ready, right? You could be feeling like that. Or this could alternatively feel like lonely at the top, right? Lonely at the top. Maybe it feels like, maybe you feel like some, you don't feel ready to take responsibility for yourself. Maybe, but that's, isn't that funny? Because you guys, I can, I can just feel from your, your vibe here that you're all very good and very experienced at taking responsibility for others, taking responsibility for others' things. So now is this moment where you can fully, what, what, what if you, what if you put that much energy into yourself? What if you fully took responsibility for yourself? What if you fully committed to yourself? That's a better way of saying this. Fully committing to your own self could you imagine what you could accomplish? Okay, I'm mad just for a second, just for just for a hot second here. <laughs> Think about all of the ways that you spend energy pouring into things that are not you. Your friends, your family, your job, the human collective, your pets, your house, your neighbors, wh whatever it is. Think of all of the ways where you show up for others, where you take care of others, where you force yourself to do things you really don't feel like doing, but you do it for others because they're your parents or they're your kids. <laughs> they're who, they're, it has to be done. It's your job. You have to go to work. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to go do that and you're gonna make yourself do it anyway. Well, <laughs> imagine if you took all of that energy and committed it to yourself. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you stop taking care of your kids or your parents if you have to take care of your parents or whatever that is, right? It's like, but what if you could give your own self that level of commitment? Think about the hours and the hours you put into your job. What if you put the, what if you put that kind of energy into yourself? You'd be rich. <laughs> Yeah, like, there's no other way to put it, right? Like, could you imagine? Could you imagine? How can you never fully, fully commit to yourself? Why is it so much easier to commit to all these other people and all these other obligations and all these other responsibilities? What about fully committing to yourself, right? What about fully committing to yourself? What could you achieve? But it's not even really about your achievements, right? But you, you would, like, accidentally have achievements. They would just flow out of you because of the amount of energy that you spend and that you put into yourself right and the more energy that you that you feed back into yourself the, the more that creates like a okay like literally imagine that like you are a blob of energy in the universe right <laughs> that's you or a blob of energy and right now all of your energy is like going out to other places right and maybe a good analogy here is water right if we have like a pool of water and there's drains all around the edges of the pool, well then all of the water drains out of the pool, right? That's like your energy, it's draining out of the pool. <laughs> but what if instead of a drain, all these drains draining the water away, draining your energy away, what if instead we had like a feedback loop or a pipe, like a fountain, right? Took the water and bent it back into the middle of the pool and then it created this like feedback loop where it was just, just the the pool fountaining water back into itself, right? You could take your own energy and put it back into your own self. Now you've created this incredibly powerful loop where your energy is never spent, it is never wasted because you're feeding it back into yourself. Now you've just created, <laughs> what have you just done? You just created perpetual motion. You just created energy that doesn't disappear, right? And, and that's like something that like in terms of 
our human science, right, at this time, we don't know how to do that, right? We don't know how to create energy without wasting energy. But what if you could do that on a spiritual level, on an energetic level, where you feed your energy back into yourself, right? And you become your own replenishing well of energy and you feed your own energy back into yourself because you're so committed to yourself, right? And then what happens when the universe sends more energy your way? Before, before, the energy would just flow. Like the, the, the universe was pouring energy at you, but it would just flow away from you because it was getting drained away. But now you've created this circuit or this flow and then the energy that the universe is sending out to you it just joins the flow it's just energy it just joins the flow and so if you if you've already created this system of of energy flowing back to you now the energy that the universe pours into you can actually flow into you so by feeding your own energy back into yourself you make you create a feedback system that allows the universe's energy to flow into you and now holy shit now you're operating on an entirely new level right where you're like gathering the energy from the universe and it's like the universe is like finally like oh my god you're finally receiving and utilizing the energy that we've been sending you it's like before you could never really fully utilize the energy the universe sent to you because it would just dissipate it would just flow away from you it would just get drained away from you but when you commit to yourself and the universe feeds this energy to you and then you just keep feeding it back to yourself now it's that changes everything that changes everything about everything like I, pff, yeah, your human life your finances your love life your career how you feel when you wake up in the morning how much energy you have as you go through the day you, the your spiritual expansion like like the the amount of dimensions you can connect with right like uh, the the amount of impact you can have on the entire multiverse it's like it changes everything because you become this massively expanding well like self-sustaining well of light and so before you were trying to help other people by piddling away your energy in their direction but now you are this like glowing sun that impacts the multiverse through time and space through your light <laughs> right through your light um and that and 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 in doing so you just now you are radiating light like you are you become radiant like a sun right you become a sun you become a star and you know you, now you are radiating light radiating light right radiating in all directions and then those people who could use some extra light right they don't need to take your light anymore they just simply bask in your radiance the way you might bask in the sun right we don't go up to the sun and like hook our fangs into it and vampirize on it right no we don't need to because the sun is giving off such an incredibly unbelievable amount of energy and light that you know we're here however many i don't i don't know how far is the earth from the sun right really far away <laughs> we sit here on this rock really far away from the sun and we exist because of the sun's light and we're not stealing any light from the sun we're just basking in the sun's radiance right we're just thriving in it so you become a sun right so that ping pong table that's where you stay in the confusion that's where you stay in the mess that's where you stay in the low frequency state but as soon as you pop up off the table and start committing to yourself Commit to yourself, commit to yourself, flow your own energy back into yourself and then start receiving the energy from the universe. You become a sun and then you radiate your light. So your light work, guys, is leveling up to the level like it's like before you were a light bulb, you were like a flashlight in the darkness. That was yesterday. Yesterday you were a flashlight that just kept burning out and you kept having to put a new bulb in, right? <laughs> the batteries kept running out, you kept having to change the batteries. It was really exhausting, kind of tedious and not very effective. Tomorrow, you're gonna be radiating like the sun. That is, I'm not even kidding guys, on an energetic level, on a spiritual level, on a cosmic level, that <laughs> is how much your light work is upgrading right now. And the only thing you have to do is just commit to yourself commit to yourself. I commit to myself. I commit my energy to my own self. I commit to myself knowing that it will be of enormous benefit to everyone I care about, right? I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. All right. Deck number three. You guys picked black moon astrology cards and i can tell you right now that 
I mean, it's hard to say how personally this is going to play out for each and, each and every one of you, but with this deck, there's always a connection to Lilith, right? The Lilith archetype and the various Liliths in astrology. I am personally having a massive Lilith like initiation. I actually just had, so at the time of filming this, Mercury just went retrograde and Mercury hit my Lilith. I have Lilith in Libra. Mercury hit Lilith and then backed around. So it's been like, I've been in a whole Lilith binge learning about what my placement means for her. So I'm just mentioning that because some of you might be interested in checking out your Lilith placement in your birth chart. Um, there are four different Liliths. I mean, actually only three, but there's one of them has two different ways of measuring it. So it's quite a rabbit hole to go down. Um, just go with what resonates, right? Because you might discover that some of your chronic struggles in life could be really well described by one or more of your Lilith placements. And I always find that useful anyway, because when I, when I find that one of my struggles in life is like described really well in my birth chart, I'm, it, it helps me like think about it. It helps me work through it. It helps me understand it. And it's this feeling of like, oh, oh, <laughs> okay, now I kind of get where that's coming from and it helps me like conceptualize my struggle, right? It helps me conceptualize my struggle. And once I can conceptualize my struggle, um, even if I can't solve the struggle immediately, I can at least understand, like I can be like, okay, I can just, I can live with this. I can live with this struggle, right? I can live with this struggle, it's fine. <laughs> it is what it is, right? It is what it is, it is. So throwing that out there for anyone interested in their, in in, in Lilith and astrology and all of that, um, I'm gonna see what else comes through. And I've been holding this uh, clear quartz because I don't know if you happen to watch, I think it was the first reading. I like whacked this off the table. And in between the second and third reading here, I got up to get some water and I picked this up off the floor so I, th I felt that was pretty symbolic, like something returning to you, right? Something returning to you. That's interesting because I, uh, that's, I, I just mentioned Mercury retrograde, right? Um, so whenever you're watching this, whatever retrogrades are going on, returning something to you, right? Returning something to you. So this, this particular this deck, this reading, there is like a an element of shadow work to it. I mean, because we're talking Lilith, talking retrogrades. But th this is there's something different about this type of shadow work. This isn't like what this isn't what I normally mean when I say shadow work. But that's just the best word I have for it. So let me for let me forge ahead here, and see what comes out. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. And the first card up is Chiron and healing. So I'm talking like your, you know, your Lilith wound. Well, isn't it interesting? The first card comes up is Chiron because Chiron is the wounded healer and your Chiron placement in your birth chart always also represents one of your core wounds. And this is interesting because I have been thinking a lot lately about the difference between your Chiron wound and your Lilith wound. Very interesting because it's almost like the Chiron wound. It's like your Chiron wound, you're very aware of it and you know it's a wound and you know it's a problem and you work through your life to heal it and you do ultimately come to a place of healing with your Chiron wound. Your Lilith wound, you might not even really be aware of it. I mean, you're aware of the problem it creates, but you might, it might be easier to kind of blame that problem on society or on someone else or on some, ed, like some external circumstances, right? And you might not really be aware that, that there is a wound involved in it. The other interesting thing about the Lilith wound is that it's like harder to heal. And I don't really know if we're meant to heal our Lilith wound, which sounds like a weird thing to say. I think for, at least for me, let me put it that way, for me right now, where I'm at with my own Lilith wound understanding is that I'm actually just here to kind of make peace with it and to just go, okay, I have this Lilith wound and I'm okay with that. I don't need to fix it. I don't even need to try to heal it. I can just be that way and it's perfectly fine. <laughs> it's perfectly fine for me to just be that way. Maybe it's a little bit dysfunctional, right? Maybe some people would say it's dysfunctional, but maybe that's just okay. And maybe it just doesn't matter. Maybe that's just part of what makes me who I am, right? And so that's a big background theme. I can tell you already what this reading is. Um, 
yeah that 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 this is maybe this will kind of help me describe what i mean by this is about shadow work but again it's not really about shadow work because it's this feeling of something that you like looking out at the universe and realizing that things you used to think were wrong things you used to think were bad even if they involve pain and suffering and wounding that they're actually just fine it's actually just part of all that is not everything has to be love and light all the time in fact it's impossible for everything to be love and light all the time because the universe exists with light and dark in perfect harmony right on the highest level light and dark both need to exist and without light and dark existing in harmony you're like light and shadow existing in harmony there would be nothing <laughs> like there, there could be nothing right so you're, this is like really um kind of higher level big 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 picture thinking so but it's also like integrating that so i'm sure most of you on like a higher level kind of understand okay you know the yin yang the idea that light and shadow good and evil if you want to call them that need need to exist both need to exist both are necessary but you still might have held some kind of bias towards the light going the light is good and good is good and shadow is bad and bad is bad right but it's like you're starting to change your understanding on that on a very human level um so one example of that is looking within yourself and going, okay, I have this wound or I have this struggle or I have this problem or I have this thing about me that maybe it's a little bit dysfunctional. Um, but it's like you're looking at that and going, well, why does that even matter? Why is that even bad? Why is this problem bad? Why, why, why is my pain bad? Why is my suffering bad? Why is any, why would I, why is any of this have to be bad? Right? Um, like... <laughs> To kind of uh, like to take a, a different view on this, like look down at the dirt beneath your feet, like go out and find some dirt, right? What is dirt? Well, dirt is where everything grows, right? Without dirt, we could not be alive because we need dirt to grow plants that we eat, right? Without dirt, nothing lives. But what is dirt? Dirt is literally dead things. Like that is literally what dirt is, right? A bunch of like bunch of plants and animals were born and lived and died and decomposed and turned into dirt, right? <laughs> so like literally on on planets we exist because of death. Like we we live on death, right? <laughs> like literally without the pile of death that is dirt, we could not eat. Um. So. This is like, this is, this is, <laughs> this is like big picture stuff, okay? Because um, some of you, like, who remember lives, you know, either specifically or just energetically speaking, you remember lives in civilizations, in planets, in dimensions, in states of consciousness where there did not have to be so much death, there did not have to be so much suffering, stuff like that. Um, you, you remember, you, you remember that, you know that, you know things don't have to be the way they are on earth, right? Then you come to earth and you realize, and, and your soul's kind of traumatized because it's like, why is everything so shitty here, right? Why does there have to be so much death? Why does there have to be so much suffering? Um, and it's a little bit like Your soul is still, and I think right now, your soul is finally acclimating to the beauty of the life system that exists here on Earth, right? The beauty of the life system that exists here on Earth. Understanding that there is an alternative perspective that you can adopt. Well, there's many different alternative perspectives that you can adopt. And maybe a, a previous perspective that you have experience with is the one where... Love and light is the only thing that is good. Pain and suffering and, sh and shadow and darkness is bad. Pain is bad. Death is bad. I want everything to be preserved in love and light for all of time forever. <laughs> like, you know, maybe your perspective on that isn't, isn't that extreme, right? But that's to go take that to a, like an extreme degree, right? That type of thinking. Um, because I mean, any of you who are starseeds and most of you watching this are probably starseeds, right? 
um, you have lived in many, 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 many lifetimes where you lived in an extremely positively polarized civilization where that was the experience, right? Um, but there's like an another perspective where death is just part of life, where, where death is what allows life to exist, where everything is just part of a never-ending cycle, and where pain serves many purposes, serves many important purposes. Without pain, so many things would never be able to be. Um, and even that pain itself doesn't even need to equate to suffering, right? The, the, that old Buddhist idea that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Just because you are in pain or just because there is pain doesn't mean that there has to be suffering. You can be in pain without suffering. You can be in pain and not even experience it as something bad. You can experience pain as neutral, perhaps. There, there is, it is even possible to get to a place where you experience pain as beautiful. Now, you don't necessarily need to get to that state of mind, but you can definitely experience pain as neutral or as some kind of necessary thing, right? You, just because there is pain doesn't mean there has to be suffering. Suffering is in your interpretation of pain. You interpret pain and you go, I'm, I need to suffer because I'm in pain or because someone else is in pain. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. And it's like you're starting to open up to these different ideas. You're starting to open up to the the shadow, like the shadow realm, if I can call it that, but I don't mean anything negative or bad in the exact opposite. You're starting to see things from the perspective of the night. I think that's, you know, instead of saying light and dark or good and evil or light and shadow, it's it's like daylight and nightlight, daylight and nightlight. And th this perspective of the, the, like when you see things in the nightlight, right? When you see things in the nightlight, ah, oh, you, you start to like understand some of you, maybe you're just starting to understand it from a place of neutrality, just understanding um, from, like neutralness of it, right? Some of you may be even understanding the beauty, the beauty. And I mean, have you, have you ever watched a movie where something sad happened in the movie, but it was so moving and, and you were crying and you were really empathizing with the characters and yet there was so much sorrow there, but yet somehow the sorrow created beauty. Right? The sorrow created beauty. Beauty can come from sorrow. Beauty can come from sorrow. Beauty can come from pain. Evolution can come from pain, right? You're starting to like understand this, open up to this. And this is a huge topic and I'm like barely, barely, barely. I feel like I'm doing a very poor job of scratching the surface of this topic. Um, but this is just to kind of point you in that direction, maybe articulate to a very small degree, this massive, massive topic, right? Um, one other specific example I can throw out there, right? Um, you know, sometimes you can actually experience pain as pleasure. Pain is pleasure, right? Just think about different experiences people have in the bedroom where sometimes pain is pleasure. Pain is pleasure. So this is like, it's like decoupling your interpretation, right? Or, or learning to interpret your experiences in a new way. So the parts of you that learned how to exist in a love and light civilization, in a high frequency, positively polarized love and light civilization, there was actually like limitations to that, right? Because being extremely positively polarized, yes, it is positive and it is all love and light, but that is polarization. That is only half of what is, right? That is extremely limiting. And then you come down here into earth and it's like earth is more and more. I'm starting to see earth as being this and like our whole physical reality, but even especially earth, this beautiful blending meeting point. It, it like, it's like, it's right in the middle between the daylight and the nightlight. And that is like, you know, that's how we experience life here, right? You have the daylight and the daytime and the nighttime and everything melds into one. So we have like both halves, both halves of the duality, everything melding here. And we have, you know, positive love and light consciousness and we have negatively oriented consciousness and it's all blending together. And where, where it blends together, that is where the most creation happens. That is where the most experience happens. That is where the most life happens, right? That is where the most life happens. That is where the most richness of experience happens. Um, so 
uh, the other thing happening here, like, or it's like this is happening in part because you guys are, ha like, you are and you have integrated your shadow aspects to an incredibly remarkable degree. So all of the shadow work you guys have been doing over years, it's like, this is when it pays off. And, and right now there's like a, it's like, it's not, it, I don't feel like at this point you're really doing more shadow work. It's like your shadow work is changing, right? This is really interesting because the first two readings were about how your light work is changing. This reading is kind of more about how your shadow work is changing. It's like before you were doing shadow work because you had to reacquaint yourself with your own shadow, right? You had to reacquaint yourself with your, the other half of yourself, right? You had to reacquaint yourself with the other half of yourself. And now it's like that phase is done. That phase of shadow work is done. Maybe it'll come back around on a spiral and you'll have a moment of the old type of shadow work. But for like 99% of the time moving forward, y y shadow work is different now. You're having a different experience of it because I feel like over the next few months, you're like finally, like you're completing this integration process. So right now you're like, it's no longer doing shadow work. It's like fully integrating the shadow so that you are now completely balanced, like completely balanced. This is like a new experience of balance. Before, maybe you had experiences of balancing your like left brain and right brain, right? Um, different aspects of yourself, however different ways you can divide yourself up. You've been balancing different parts of yourself. You've been balancing your masculine and your feminine energy. Um, really now, this is like about balancing your, your, your light and your shadow and realizing, like really understanding on a whole new level, really, really internalizing this down into your bones that your light self and your shadow self or any other words you can come up with to describe that in a better way. They are equal. They are equal. They are equal. They are in every way. They are equal to the point of being the same, <laughs> right? It's like, you know, when you look at a photo and a photo negative, even though the, the colors are completely swapped, right? They are, they are, they are complete inversions of each other. But when you look at them, you go, wait, it, it, it's the same. They are opposites, but they are perfect opposites. They are perfectly opposite. They are perfectly the same. The fact that the colors are swapped actually just makes them even more the same, right? It's like they're perfect mirror images of each other. So this is what, this is, this is really powerful because you're like dropping out of the binary experience, like almost entirely, like it, it's happening. Like you're coming into this level of cosmic balance like you are now the yin yang like inside of yourself you, like yin and yang energy balanced inside of yourself and it, it's just it's really incredible and you could be experiencing this manifest in interesting ways in your human life because you could find your preferences changing about like how you want to live your life or the things that you do, the type of TV that you watch, the type of people you hang out with, um, maybe even your sexual preferences changing, um, like your sexual orientation expanding, uh, like, and, or just realizing things about yourself on different levels and going like, wow, I was like this all along, I just never knew. Like, it doesn't matter what age you are. You could go, how did I never notice this about myself? How did I never realize this about myself? It was so obvious all along. How did I not know, <laughs> right? How did I not realize? Like, because it's like there's certain things that maybe they belong to the shadow half of yourself or the, the nighttime aspect of yourself, right? They were there all along, so obvious, but you just couldn't notice them, couldn't reconcile them, couldn't see them, but now you're seeing them. So all of these different parts of yourself are coming online and it can really change. Like there's, I mean, obviously this is like a really a deeply spiritual reading here, but it's also really going to affect your human life. And just so really allow yourself to be very, very flexible in how you exist in your human body and the things that you do, the things that you like. It's like, don't make any assumptions about yourself at this point, because you are now going to be moving forward from a play, like an entirely new experience of wholeness. And yes, it might be true that you've had experiences of wholeness in yourself before. This is a more expanded level because you are now the complete yin yang. <laughs> like you are now the complete yin yang. I don't have any other better way to describe that. And I mean, so 
I mean, look at these cards, right? We start out with the healing, <laughs> right? Talking about Lilith wounds, and we got the Chiron card out here, working on your healing, integrating your shadow to this whole new level. And then what happens? Part of fortune, increase, and Jupiter return benefits. <laughs> Because, so if you watched the second reading, uh, it, that reading finishes talking about like you becoming a sun and like radiating like the sun, right? We have a similar thing going on here. This is, but th this is different. This is like the gifts, the fortune, whatever is, what did I say? What did I say? Right? When th th something returning to you. I said, isn't that what I said? I picked up this crystal and I was like, something's returning to you, right? Something that you had jettisoned before. Something that you had jettisoned maybe earlier in this life or maybe in some past life, something you gave up, something you dropped, something you jettisoned, something you left behind, something that was taken from you. It's returning to you now. Okay. It's returning to you now. Part of fortune increase, right? Literally like, blessings in abundance like we got the part of fortune and you got jupiter here this is just blessings in abundance pouring in from everywhere and it's like before you weren't able to receive all of these blessings in abundance because you were cut off from half of yourself you were cut off from the shadow part of yourself and you maybe judged and rejected some of those shadow aspects of yourself but now you realize they're all perfect they're all beautiful they're all you right they're just they're the you and they are what is it's like you've completely man i remember i, I just and my guides are reminding me very specifically of a video i made almost a year ago now and it was something about expanding your bubble of non-judgment <laughs> expanding your bubble of non-judgment so some of you here i mean well all of you really but you you have expanded your bubble of non-judgment to an incredible degree, right? An incredible degree. You have dropped out of so much like criticism and judginess and even like analytical thinking. You've just gone like, I don't need that shit anymore. And you are like inclusive of your whole self and you are inclusive of all of consciousness. You are inclusive of all that is. And there's this like incredibly like beautiful miracle that's happening behind the scenes where you realize that like, you never needed to be afraid of any of that right? You never needed to be afraid of pain. You never needed to be afraid of death. You never needed to be afraid of suffering. You never needed to be afraid of those people that you think do things that you don't like, right? You never needed to be afraid of any of it. Nothing is really what you thought it was. Pain and suffering and death is not what you think it is. It was, it was never that. Like the shadow elements, however you want to put it, right? I, I really want to emphasize that I feel like my words are like drastically dropping short here. <laughs> so, I hope you can just feel beyond my words, right? Because my, my words are not cutting it. <laughs> I'm like feeling that, like I'm kind of frustrated with myself, but I, I can't, I can't put this into words any better. You'll just have to feel, you'll just have to feel this one, guys. <laughs> I, all of these, these, this, this shadow stuff, you're realizing that it was not at all what you thought it was and it's never anything to be afraid of and it was never anything you had, to, that you had to judge. And so now that, because you've expanded your bubble, your bubble of non-judgment to such an incredible degree, now, you're operating from this place of like infinity, from this place of wholeness. And so on the one hand, you are becoming, you, you are now a sun, you are radiating like the sun, but on the other hand, you are also the beautiful, complete depths of the void, right? And knowing that the void is the womb of creation and that it is perfect and beautiful and it is never anything to be feared and that is where all things ultimately come from even the light right but then you can also think like i'm not going to get into this i'm just going to throw it out there as a food for thought for somebody who wants to go down a rabbit hole right when you take light and void and you fuse them back together what do you get what came before the division of light and void that's a topic for another day but <laughs> right? It's just, you guys are, this is really incredible. This is like an incredible achievement of consciousness. You, you have reached a, like an incredible achievement of consciousness. I feel this, like, I feel like <laughs> it's a little overwhelming because all of the beings, and there are more higher dimensional beings like tuning into this message right now than there normally are um, because they're here to witness you because they, they, they want to extend. I'm getting like shivers and getting kind of choked up like because I can feel like they they want you to know how much of an accomplishment this expansion of consciousness is 
not like it for it for you and for the entire universe because you have like attained a level of unity consciousness within yourself that heals the entire multiverse right this is this is a healing accomplishment for the entire universe because you have allowed yourself to become whole and you have allowed yourself to become all that you are and you have allowed yourself to integrate all parts of yourself and you have allowed yourself to drop out of all criticism and judgment and yes so sometimes in your human life you might still feel judgmental and you might still criticize people it's like those are just fleeting moments the fact is that on a this level of your soul you have already done the work and the fact that you don't constantly stabilize this in every single moment of your human life is it's like it doesn't even really matter right <laughs> because you have done it on the soul level right your soul has done this you've had this major accomplishment and it's like, this is what you came here to do. So anybody who feels like that you came to earth to, to do something, it's like you've done it. You've completed this within yourself. Everything else you do now, you're like at the top of the slide and you're riding down the slide now. The, re the rest of this is just a fun ride and it's like the icing on the cake and you might go on to have the most incredible, to do the most incredible things, to have the most incredible experiences in consciousness and to to, to, con to contribute to consciousness on in absolutely unbelievable ways and all of that is going to be the icing on the cake because you have done what you came to do you've done your light work right and you've done your light work and you've done your shadow work and now you need a new word that includes that that no longer talks about the binary between light work and shadow work between what what's a new word what's a new word make one up for yourself no one else even has to use it i mean you can recommend it to others you can put it out there but what's a new word for a being who is unified in light and shadow within themselves. What, who, what is a person who walks both paths in perfect harmony, the light and the shadow path? What is a person who is a unified yin-yang in and of themselves, right? And what is a word to describe what you do moving forward from this place of wholeness? The entire universe is just, my dog is excited for you. Can you hear him? <laughs> okay, guys, I, I'm kind of losing it. So I'm just going to conclude here by trying to just transmit the energy to you of the amount of gratitude that... all of the beings in the universe have for you and the respect they have for you and just the joy they have in being able to witness you and your experience of your own consciousness just so much gratitude so much love so much respect <laughs> right so much respect and gratitude and love and i'm just gonna leave you guys with that feeling because i don't got words for this one guys i don't have words Sending you so much love and light. Talk to you later. Bye.